By the end of this video, you're going to learn how to play the Vardengast Swarm Combat Patrol team so that you can win more games. Baron of Dice is your one-stop shop for premium wargaming dice. There are no imperfections in our dice, which means there are no balancing issues, and you can quite literally feel and hear a difference with our dice. Whatever game you play, Baron of Dice is sure to have something to elevate your game. Purchase your own set of premium dice in the description below. Now, the most important thing about this combat patrol team is their stratagems. And the two stratagems that we're going to focus on are hyper reactive and teaming broods. You can target one of your own infantry unit during your opponent's shooting or fight phase. And until the end of the phase, each time an attack targets your unit, you can subtract one from the hit roll. Teaming broods can be activated during the reinforcement step of your movement phase or at the beginning of your movement phase. And you're going to target one termagant unit. You're going to activate this every single turn when you need to. Obviously, if you have a full amount of Termagants on your side of the battlefield, there would be no need to activate Teeming Broods. Otherwise, you're always going to want to activate Teeming Broods so that you can replenish your Termagants, because what this does is, if your unit is not destroyed, return up to D6 destroyed models to it. Otherwise, add a new unit to your army identical to your destroyed unit in strategic reserves containing two D6 models. Keeping in mind, guys, that we have 20 Termagant models inside this list that we're playing with. What we want to do is take all of these Termagants and work them up the board so that they are in the center of the board. Because it's going to take us some time to get the Termagants up the board to the objective, we need a way to slow our opponents down. The first thing we're going to slow our opponent down with is the Von Ryan's Leapers. If you notice new players, this has Infiltrators and Stealth, but most importantly, Infiltrators. Infiltrate allows you to place the Von Ryan's Leapers on the battlefield anywhere you want, 9 inches away from your opponent's deployment zone. So in other words, if you go first, you get to take the Von Ryan's Leapers and just immediately run them into your opponent's backfield, pinning your opponent's models in the backfield. That means that for the entirety of your opponent's first turn, they have to not move, they forego moving, and they have to just fight to take out the Von Ryan's Leapers essentially skipping one of your opponent's movement phases. The next unit we're going to have to slow down our opponent's models is the Bar Gaunt. So after your opponents are done taking out the Von Ryan's Leapers, we can use the Barb Gaunts to shoot at our opponent's models because Barb Gaunts have an ability called Disruption Bombardment. In your shooting phase after this unit has shot, select one enemy infantry unit hit by one or more of those attacks. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, that enemy unit is disrupted. While unit is disrupted, subtract two from its movement characteristic and subtract two from its advance and charge rolls. Now, you're not going to be killing a lot of things with Barb Gaunts, but what you're going to do is just force your opponent's models to slow down. And when they're slowed down, it buys time for your Termagants to get to the center of the board where you want them to be so that your opponent's models can shoot at the Termagants so that as they shoot at your Termagants, you have the ability to activate your stratagems like we talked about earlier with Teeming Broods, bringing them back to life and at the same time activating Hyper Reactive only on your Termagants so that your opponents are minus one to hit at your Termagants. So you're not spending any CP on re-rolling. If you really need to remove something, you activate Voracious Assault so that you can re-roll your hit rolls. However, you're only spending your CP on Hyper Reactive and Teeming Broods. When we look at the other models on this kill team, we have a model here called the Psychophage. Guys, I'm gonna be real, the Psychophage is... So when we look at the, the I'm not, it's so bad that we're not even gonna look at the rules over here. We're just gonna read the flavor text, and this is gonna tell you how to play this model. These monsters stampede into battle with frightening speed. Guys, this is D6 attacks, D6 plus one attacks, which means that you have the potential of rolling one attack over here or two attacks in melee, which is just absolutely unheard of. And I feel like they needed to make him this bad so that it's balanced because he has a 10 wound model with, with nine toughness. He does have 8 inch move, so what you're going to do is take advantage of this quote unquote frightening speed and you're just going to advance this model and run him up the field. He looks really scary. Make sure you paint him so that he looks really scary. Put blood all over the model, right, so that your opponents are scared. And then just advance him up the field. It does not matter whether he kills things or not because he's rarely ever... I'm Dude, if... 
Dude, if you play with the Psychophage and you kill more than three models or two models with the Psychophage during your game, please let me know in the comment section below. Take a picture of it, record a video of it, call the Guinness Book of World Records, do something because I cannot, I would not believe that you were able to kill more than two models with this model. Just advance this model. If you roll a six on the advance roll, you're gonna be moving 14 inches up the battlefield so that you can take advantage of the frightening speed and you guys understand what I'm saying. This this model is now the other model that we have left over here is the Terror of Varden Gas. Now he does have a 12 inch move. I'm gonna recommend guys that just because he has a 12 inch move does not necessarily mean that you want to run him up the field really fast because he is fast. I would keep him in the backfield in case your opponents are gonna play models that have the ability to deep strike so that you can protect your deployment zone. Because he is fast, if your opponents get to the point where they're able to push up the field and they start threatening melee against your Termagants, that's when you're gonna fly the Terra of Vardengast up the battlefield to then potentially charge into your opponent's models to essentially create another roadblock, which is what I mentioned earlier about slowing your opponent's models down. And because the Terra Vardengast has a two damage melee attack with six attacks, that if you really need to, you could activate Voracious Assault to give yourself rerolls on these melee attacks. That means that you're you're put in a position where you could decimate an opponent's unit. You're also gonna equip the Terra of Vardengast with the Psychostatic Veil, which gives him a four up and vulnerable save, which is amazing. And he also has the lone operative ability. He can only be shot at within 12 inches. And every single time, most importantly, a melee attack targets the bearer, subtract one from the hit roll. The Psychostatic Veil is the reason why you call that model the Terror of Vardengast. The secondary objective I recommend you take is Alpha Xenoform, which reads at the end of each phase, which means your own phase, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that means also your opponent's phase, you score a VP if your Wing Tyranid Prime or the Terror of Vardengast model destroys one or more enemy models that phase. We know we're gonna score points for this because our Terra of Vardengast is the Terror of Vardengast, so he's gonna destroy things. And also keep in mind that because we're pushing or pinning our opponents back into their deployment zone with our models, it's gonna be difficult for our opponents to score points. And if we're able to score points with our Terror, whether it's once or twice, I think that over the course of the game, you're just gonna end up drowning out your opponents. Look, like we're not looking to table our opponents. If anything, they're gonna destroy a lot more of our models than we're gonna be able to destroy of theirs. But it may get to a point where your opponents will just end up losing because we'll just have scored so many more points than they did. And that is how you guys play the Vardengast Swarm. If you guys like this video, you guys can like this video and subscribe. If you guys want me to make a video for a specific combat patrol, leave it in the comment section below so that I know to make that video. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming in the future for this channel, all right? Always remember everybody, eat healthy, okay? Work out every single day. And most importantly, you guys gotta remember to believe in yourself, all right? Peace out, people.